let's begin with the next topic that is motion in a plane okay so now let's suppose we have some object which is moving on a plane for an example we can consider an ant which is moving on a table okay so this is the initial position of the ant and we denote it using this position vector let's call it r not so at some time let's say at time t it moves till here okay so suppose it takes this path now this will be the final position and if i want to find out the displacement i will just subtract this final position vector sorry i will subtract the initial position vector from the final position vector and i will get displacement okay so you can find out displacement from here so this will be the displacement vector so using triangle law i can write r not plus this vector will be equal to rt and therefore delta r is equal to rt minus r not okay this is very simple then displacement vector is final position vector minus initial position vector okay after that if i want to find out velocity what will i do i will just divide the displacement by time okay so the displacement vector itself delta r it can be resolved along two components so this is delta x this is delta y okay so average velocity in this time interval is delta r bar upon delta t right and this delta r bar can be written as delta x bar plus delta y bar so we have average velocity equals to delta x upon delta t delta x bar upon delta t plus delta y bar upon delta t so this is your x component of velocity you can say and this is the y component of velocity okay so this is vx bar this is vy bar okay and vx bar can be written as vx times i cap vy bar can be written as vy times j cap and therefore your average velocity will be equal to what so it is vx times i cap plus vy times j cap and its magnitude is equal to square root of vx square plus vy square so this is fine okay then if you want instantaneous velocity this is average velocity so what did we do we found the displacement and we divided that by time so if we want instantaneous velocity it will be just derivative of position with respect to time so in this case it will be derivative of position vector with respect to time okay so we just have to take okay in this equation we can just take limit delta t tends to 0 and we'll get what we'll get the velocity vector okay so instantaneous velocity vector will be equal to what derivative of x position with respect to time you can say that is vx so here vx is dx by dt and vy is dy by dt okay right so we can find out instantaneous velocity in this way so then now if you want acceleration how will you find acceleration acceleration will be change in velocity divided by time okay so now your object is moving like this suppose this is velocity when it started okay so this is v not bar in magnitude and direction you draw it okay so magnitude is equal to what length of this vector direction is direction of this vector and this is vt so at some time t it is moving let's suppose in this direction at this position it's moving in this direction and with this much velocity so length of this vector will be equal to its magnitude of the velocity so then if you take this vector which is vt minus this vector so to subtract we can put this vector over here okay so this vector minus this vector will give us delta v bar that is change in velocity fine so delta v bar is equal to vt bar minus v not bar okay and if you want average acceleration you can just find it out using 
this difference divided by delta t so this is this is okay okay all right so this is average acceleration in this much time interval right and if you want instantaneous acceleration you will take derivative of velocity with respect to time fine and now remember these vectors okay velocity at this point so object is moving like this so at this point velocity will be tangential to the path okay at any time actually the velocity will be tangential to the path at this point it is tangential to the path okay so instantaneous velocity vector will be always tangential right instantaneous velocity vector will be always tangential to the path okay so these are some basic terms and then if you want acceleration as i said we can find out acceleration using delta v bar by delta t okay so delta v bar can be written as for velocity also there will be two components right so one will be vx other one is vy so delta v bar can be written as delta vx by delta t into i cap plus delta vy by delta t into j cap this is your acceleration okay and if you want its magnitude so for two dimensional case this is the x component this is y component this is ax this is ay acceleration is square root of ax square plus ay square okay so this is how we can find out the displacement velocity and acceleration and we can use kinematic equations of motion so you can just write your kinematic equation of motion for an example s is equal to ut plus half at square but here everything will be a vector okay everything will will be a vector if you are in two dimensions you will have two components if you are in three dimensions you will have three components fine so here this equation if you are in two dimensions these are two equations actually so you can write two separate equations for x component and y component of position velocity acceleration right so see this s is equal to ut plus half of at square can be written as its x component can be written as sx so what is sx displacement in x direction okay final x position minus initial x position it is equal to ux times t plus half of ax times t square similarly you can write displacement in y direction is ui times t plus half of ay times t square so this is your kinematic equations equation of motion similarly you can use first kinematic equation third kinematic equation okay but it will be applicable only when only when there is uniform acceleration fine okay so the x and y coordinates of the particle at any time are x equal to 5t minus 2t square and y equals to 10t respectively where x and y are in meters and t in seconds the acceleration of particle at t equals to 2 seconds this is straightforward question can you tell me what should we do we have been given double differentiate okay so we can take dx by dt vx equals to dx by dt and acceleration in x direction will be derivative of vx with respect to t dv dvx by dt and that is equal to we can say d2x by dt square similarly acceleration in y direction will be d2y by dt square so now here we are asked about acceleration so if we double differentiate this what will we get acceleration in y direction would be zero right because there is only it's proportional to t only okay so see you have this equation s is equal to ut yeah it's option b so you have this equation s is equal to ut plus half at square okay this is for uniform acceleration a 
if acceleration depends on time then you have you will have t raised to something okay something else if it is t square then it is uniform acceleration right so for an example if acceleration is proportional to time then you you will have term like this a times t cube okay s is equal to time okay you will have you know you want acceleration no right s is equal to a times t cube so if you differentiate it twice you will have term which is proportional to okay term which is proportional to t right so here you have ax equals to this d2x by dt square if you double differentiate this okay if you differentiate it what do you get vx is equal to d by dt of this thing 5t minus 2t square okay so that will be 5 minus differentiation of this thing it will be minus 4t and if you differentiate it once more so d by dt of vx will be equal to d by dt of this thing 5 minus 4t so derivative of 5 will be 0 and derivative of the second term will be minus 4 okay so this is minus 4 and similarly if you differentiate this one okay so dy by dt is dy it is equal to 10 and if you differentiate this okay dv by by dt this will be 0 okay so there is acceleration only in x direction and there is no acceleration in y direction okay so the answer is minus 4 option b right so good raku this is clear sai let's see next question the particle is moving such that its position coordinates are x position coordinates x y are 2 meters 3 meters at time t equals to 0 6 meter 7 meter at time t equals to 2 second and 13 meters 14 meters at t equals to 5 seconds average velocity vector from t equals to 0 to t equals to 5 second is tell me what should we do see you have given differentiate but differentiate no 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 but what will you differentiate you can differentiate only if x y they are given in terms of time if they are function of time right and they are asking about average okay so there is no differentiate differentiation in average right Yeah, that will be velocity in x component, x component of velocity. Okay. And if you do y2 minus y1 divided by t2 minus t1, it will be y component of velocity. Okay. So this thing you should understand that average, if they are asking about average quantity, there will be difference, no differentiation. If they are asking about instantaneous quantity, then only then only you have to take derivative this is clear okay so there is no derivative here okay so see positions are given at t equals to 0 then at time t equals to 2 second and at t equals to 5 second average velocity from t equals to 0 to t equals to 5 this is the question so positions at t equals to 0 i will say x0 is equal to 2 meters from this one and y0 equals to 3 meters and you want average from t equals to 0 to t equals to 5 so that means you should not consider this one okay consider just this one the positions at 
t equals to 5 okay so x5 is equal to 13 meters and y5 is equal to 14 meters right okay so what will be vx it will be x5 minus x0 divided by t equals to 5 minus t equals to 0 that is 5 okay so you're getting x5 is how much it's 13 x0 is 2 so 13 minus 2 upon 5 or you can say 11 by 5 what will be v5 sorry vy it will be y5 minus y0 divided by 5 okay 5 seconds so y5 is 14 it is 14 minus y0 is how much 3 and you have 5 so this is also 11 by 5 so what is the answer so vx is 11 by 5 right vx is 11 by 5 vy is also 11 by 5 so the velocity will be equal to v bar is equal to vx into i cap plus vy times j cap okay vx and vy both are equal you can take it common so it will be 11 by 5 i plus j right this is clear size okay so remember this thing whenever average is asked there will be difference okay you have to find difference right and whenever instantaneous quantity is asked then only you will take derivative okay all right next question a body is moving with velocity 30 meters per second towards east after 10 seconds its velocity becomes 40 meters per second towards north the average acceleration of the body is tell me what should we do It's a simple body is moving um not relative velocity really okay let me explain so body is moving towards east and then it becomes towards north right so this is how much 30 meters per second so its initial velocity you can say this is the initial velocity okay and it is equal to 30 meters per second i can say it is some vx because this is east this is north so vx multiplied by i cap okay and its final velocity v final or i will say vf is equal to vy times j cap okay it is moving towards north and what will be acceleration acceleration is just change in velocity divided by time right so it will be final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time so velocity final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time okay so that is uh, 40 meters per second so it is 40 j cap right minus it is 40 i cap and divided by time is how much 10 so it is 40 upon 10 and this is 30 by 10 so minus 3 i cap plus 4 j cap is the answer oh they are not asking about the okay velocity will be yeah, let's check minus 3 i cap plus 4 j cap and they are only asking about the magnitude so magnitude will be square root of vx square plus vy square so that is minus 3 square plus 4 square so how much this is 9 plus 16 okay actually you have 3 4 5 pair right right angle triangle so it will be 5 so 3 square is 9 4 square is 16 so 9 plus 16 is 25 square root of 25 is 5 5 meters per second oh no this is not velocity 
what did i write it is acceleration okay this is acceleration and its magnitude this is magnitude there will be no bar okay it is option d this is clear sai okay next question particle starting from origin moves in straight line in xy plane its coordinates are its coordinates at later time are root 3 3 path of the particle makes the x axis an angle of okay the particle starting from origin moves in a straight line in xy plane its coordinates are coordinates at a later time are root 3 3 path of the particle makes with the x axis an angle of this is the question so is it moving in a straight line yeah it's a moving it is moving in a straight line so this is simple initial coordinates are given coordinates at some later time are given so we want to find the angle between its path and the x axis okay so let's draw x and y axis okay so initial coordinates are 0 0 ideal coordinates x coordinate is root 3 y coordinate is 3 so let's suppose this is root 3 and this is 3 Okay, the so object will be here. Root three, three, and we move along this path. So we are asked how much would be this angle theta. Tell me. You know how this thing. Okay, you can find out tan of theta, which will be three upon root three, right? It is fifty degree, no? Okay, tan of theta will be equal to root three, right? It's sixty degrees. Sine sixty is root three by two. Cos sixty is one by two. Okay, if you divide this, you will have root three. This two and two will get cancel out. Okay, this is clear. Question, solution is it clear? Sai. Next question. The bus is moving on a straight road. towards north with uniform speed it is moving with uniform speed 50 km per hour then it turns left through 90 degrees if the speed remains unchanged after turning the increase in the velocity of bus in taking the turning process is tell me speed remains constant the increase in the velocity of bus in turning process Option A is seventy point seven. Option B is zero. Will it be equal to zero? Okay, good. Will not be equal to zero. Right. Speed does not change, but direction of velocity changing. Okay. So we just have to find the increase in the velocity. Okay. So earlier it is moving. Which one? Let's check. Initial velocity is towards north, and then it takes turn towards left. So this is initial velocity. This is final velocity, right? Initial is towards north. Final is towards west because it's taking turn towards left. Okay. So what will be final minus initial? You want this minus this. 
okay this one minus this so oh no should have okay let me redraw it here so initial is towards north so the initial velocity towards north okay this is final velocity and you want final minus initial okay so what will you do this will be final and you want minus initial so you can draw it here this will be minus vi right yes no okay so now what will be resultant of these two it will be in this direction The resultant of these two will be in this direction. Right? So what is that direction? This southwest. Right. It's southwest. So it's option A. Okay. So this is clear. Let's see next question. When an object is shot from the bottom of a long, smooth, inclined plane, kept an I'm sorry. When an object is shot from the when an object is shot from the bottom of a long, smooth, inclined plane, kept at an angle 60 degree with horizontal, it can travel a distance x1 along the plane. But when inclination is decreased 30 degree and the same object is shot with the same velocity, it can travel x2 distance. Then x1 is to x2 will be. This is the question. Okay. So tell me what we can do. All right. So let's read the question again. When an object is shot from the bottom of a long smooth inclined plane kept at an angle of 60 degree with horizontal, it can travel a distance x1 along the plane. Okay. So you have an object, this is suppose your object it is shot at an angle of 60 degree with the horizontal. Okay, it is shot at an angle of 60 degree with the horizontal. So it's shot in this direction. Okay. It goes to some distance. It goes till distance x1. Right? Okay. And when it is shot, when the inclination is decreased to 30 degrees, then what happens? It goes to distance x2. So, alright. So, now we have to find out this distance. Okay. This distance. So, it is shot with some initial velocity, you can say it is u. When it goes to this height, what will happen? How much will be its velocity? When it stops, how much will be its velocity? 0, right? Okay. So, now what will be acceleration? So, you can say acceleration is acceleration due to gravity, it is acting in downwards direction. Okay. And if you want component of this acceleration along this plane, so this angle is how much? This angle is theta. Okay, how much will be this angle then? This angle will be 90 minus. No, it will be. Okay, this angle will be 90 minus theta. Okay, right. Can I, shall I draw it here? This angle is theta. So this angle will be okay. Can you see this? This total is 180 degrees. This is 90. This is theta. So this plus this should be equal to 90 degrees. So this angle is 90 minus theta. 
yes no or this and this one is vertically opposite okay so this is theta that's why this is 90 minus theta okay so this is 90 minus theta so you have g in this direction it's a component along this direction if you are going through the angle it is g cos of I'm sorry g cos of 90 minus theta that is g sin theta right what will be its component it is g sin theta okay yes no so here I am explaining this for the first time and here onwards you should remember this okay so component of acceleration due to gravity along an inclined plane will be g sin theta fine okay then is it helping the velocity or is it opposing the velocity opposing the velocity okay so you can write v square is equal to u square minus 2as or 2ax1 okay so let's put suffix 111 right we are discussing first case so acceleration is equal to g sin theta so final velocity will be zero you have u1 square minus two times of g sin theta into x1 which means you have u1 square is equal to 2g sin theta times x1 Similarly, for the second case, you are only changing theta, everything else is similar. You can say u2 square will be equal to 2g sin theta times x2. Okay. So this thing will get cancelled out. Right. So you have u1 square upon u2 square equal to x1 upon x2. Okay. And you want x1 upon x2 only. So it will be just u1 square by u2 square. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Speed is same. Okay, you are changing theta. Theta is changing. You are changing theta. Okay. So this thing and this thing will get cancelled. This thing and this thing will get cancelled. X1 upon X2 will be sine of theta 2 divided by sine of theta 1. Okay. Sine of theta 2. So theta 2 is in uh, 60 degrees. Okay. So it's half and sine of theta 1 is root 3 by 2 so it will be 1 upon root 3 okay answer will be 1 upon root 3 yes no got it let us see next question a particle has initial velocity pi plus 4j and acceleration is given its speed after 10 seconds is this is very very simple question okay v equals to u plus at right and it has got two components so i can say vx will be equal to ux plus ax into t and vy is uy plus ay into t so that is 3 right x component is 3 okay x component of velocity is 3 acceleration is 0.4 3 plus 0 0.4 times t is 10 how much is this this is 0.4 times 10 okay this is 7 and this is 4 plus 0.3 times 10 so this is also 7 okay vx is 7 vy is 7 answer is right option b so v equals to square root of vx square plus vy square that's equal to square root of 7 square plus 7 square 2 okay times 7 square or 7 root 2 option b okay good you are quite fast in calculations right but i have to do this for the students who will be seeing this afterwards Anyways, let us see next question. Two boys are standing at the ends A and B of a. Okay, let me read it again. Two boys are standing at the ends A and B of a ground where AB equals to A. 
the boy at B starts running in a direction perpendicular to AB with velocity V1. The boy at A starts running simultaneously with velocity V and catches the other in time T where T is. Okay. So, we have two boys, they are standing at two ends of a ground. Okay, one at A, other one at B. And this AB distance is given. One boy is here at A, the other boy is here at B. This distance is given, it's equal to A. Right? Then, boy at B starts running in a direction perpendicular to AB. So, this one moves perpendicular to AB. With how much velocity? With velocity v1. Okay. Boy at A starts running simultaneously with velocity v. So he starts running and catches the other. So this one, A catches B in time t. This is given. Okay. Where t is. So now if he wants to catch B, in what direction should he run? Long x along y or inclined? Inclined, right. So, how much will be that inclination? We can find. Okay, so suppose he runs in this direction. Okay, so this is suppose velocity of second boy and it's given to be v, right? It is given to be v. So, now see this boy covers some distance in y direction. So, this boy. He is at some x distance away from this boy. Okay. And initially, when they started, their y component, okay, y position, I can say, it was same. Right? They were they were on same straight line, same x axis, we can say. So y component of the position is same. Okay. So now after some time t, if this boy wants to catch the other one. So, his y component of velocity should be how much? Same as this one. Okay. So, he wants to cover this x distance. That's okay. But, they are starting from this position. So now, in y direction, this boy covers some distance. Same distance should be covered by this boy in same time. Okay? If y distance is right. So, y component of his velocity should be equal to, y component of his velocity should be equal to how much? It should be v1. So this is also v1. Sorry, this much. V1. Okay. And here is some x component of velocity. Okay. So now they cover same distance along y direction in time t. So now we can find out. Okay, we can find out how much will be that time. So see, in this time, they cover distance equal to uh, y at a covers distance equal to vx, okay, in time t. Sorry, distance equal to a, okay. So I can say vx a is equal to vx times t. And that is t is equal to a divided by vx. This distance a divided by vx, right? And therefore, now you know v, okay, you know v1. Can you find out vx? This is vy, vy is equal to v1, okay? So, therefore, you have v square equals to, I can say, vx square plus vy square or vx square 
is equal to v square minus v y square and that's equal to v square minus v1 square okay so how much will be vx i want vx right it will be square root of this thing okay vx will be equal to square root of v square minus v1 square okay so let's put it here is there such an option yeah it is option d can you see that okay i can say t is equal to a upon vx that is equal to a divided by square root of v square minus v1 square okay so in numerator you have a which can be written as square root of a square so this is option d yes no this is clear so this is slightly tricky question compared to the other ones okay other ones were very straight forward here we need to understand a few things right so first thing is they were at same y position and distance covered along y direction by both of them will be equal okay in same time okay so y component of velocity of a should be equal to velocity of b which is in y direction only okay and a has to cover this much distance also distance equal to a also in x direction so in time t if he wants to catch b then he has to cover this much distance along x direction also okay so this distance along x direction will be equal to vx times t okay and from that we can find out t and then we can relate okay t is equal to a upon vx we know its velocity we know y component of velocity we can find out x component of velocity right yes no Let's see next one. Rain is falling vertically downwards with a velocity of four kilometer per hour. A man walks in rain with a velocity of three kilometer per hour. The raindrops will fall on the man with a velocity of. This is from NCERT. Right. There is exactly same question. Instead of man, there is a woman who is cycling. Okay. Exactly same question. with same values also i guess okay tell me what should we do okay so rain is falling vertically downwards with velocity of 4 km per hour so this is velocity of rain velocity of rain and man is walking in the rain with velocity of 3 km per hour so let's suppose man walks in this direction okay so this is velocity of man this is velocity of rain so raindrops will fall on the man with velocity of they are only asking about the magnitude okay so now here we have to find out the relative velocity of rain with respect to man okay because they are asking raindrops will fall on the man okay so raindrop are falling and man is also walking so both of them have some velocity okay so you want to find relative velocity of the raindrops with respect to man right yes no okay that will be velocity of rain right velocity of rain with respect to man is equal to velocity of rain minus velocity of man okay so that is equal to so it is so this is with direction we want only magnitude okay but if we want with direction 
so you can just draw this vector on opposite side this will be minus of velocity of man right velocity of man is in this direction this is minus of that and you want its resultant okay because you want vr minus vm bar so okay raindrop will fall in this direction okay they will appear to fall in this direction for this man right is it clear yes no so this is common observance right if we walk okay in forward direction and raindrops are falling like this downwards then they appear to fall okay at some inclined angle okay raindrop uh, rain it appears to come at some inclined angle with the vertical okay towards you so man is walking like this so raindrops are falling downwards they will appear to come in this direction okay so if direction is asked we can tell about direction also okay all right so yeah what will be the answer this is 4 right this is 4 no and velocity of man is 3 how much will be this vr is equal to 4 vm is equal to 3 so v will be equal to square root of vr square plus vm square okay so that is 4 square plus 3 square again this is equal to 5 kilometers per hour right 